Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael Sano, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the 12 Cities in Israel podcast, the only positive podcast about the food, the people, and the culture of Israel. We're here to tell you about all the great things that this big little country has to offer. Now, listen, if this is your first time watching us on the video version of this podcast, please, please, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're always in the loop and always know when we have a brand new, fresh episode out. Oh, just hit the microphone. Sorry about that. If you'd like to take us with you on your way to work or to the gym, you can find the audio version of this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and on Spotify, that is actually where my wife um, downloads it. And uh, also, if you'd like to help support what we do, please feel free to become a patron of the show by heading on over to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel.com. The number one, two cities in Israel.com. Uh, no patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel and set up a monthly donation. We would appreciate it. And every donation, um, helps us keep this awesome, awesome show going. This is going to be such a fun episode, but, but, but before, all right. So this is episode 36 and this episode is going to be kind of fun. You're going to learn a lot of stuff about Israel. You're going to learn a lot of fun stuff about Israel. What we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about music in Israel. Um, a, lo- a while back, and I was looking for the article, and I, and I had a little bit of trouble finding it. But a while back, I, uh, I read an article that said Israelis prefer Hebrew, Hebrew music. And I think it was through Spotify. They had, they had done a, uh, done an analysis, but, uh, yeah, crazy, right? All right. Before we get going, before we get going, I have to do a couple of shout outs to our sponsors. Hey guys, we do this every time and we love representing. So our first one is from Neviot Plus. Neviot Plus flavored water, nature at its best taste. Neviot Plus delivers you with a true combination of health and pleasure. It's based on Neviot natural mineral water, one of its kind in Israel. It's enhanced with five B group vitamins. It's naturally sweetened. It is low in calories, only 35 to 40 calories per eight fluid ounces. There are no preservatives, no color additives, and it's available in delicious indulging flavors flavors like apple grape and peach which we have here today um it actually tastes like a peach you're gonna lose your mind um if you're in israel you should be drinking neviot so for more information check out their website at www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home that is global dot com forward slash en forward slash home now if you want to pick up this water in the u.s or in canada head on over to our next sponsor makolet online their main goal is to make israeli groceries and judaic products affordable and available to everyone in the u.s and in canada their online store carries items that are unavailable in most places in north america things like tahini israeli chocolates frozen borekas and the Neviat water, which we have here today. Um, at Makolet Online, you'll find your favorite Israeli goods uh, or just enjoy brand new flavors. So all their products are kosher and most are manufactured in Israel. And because you're watching this show, yay, we have a coupon code, 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two cities in Israel. If you use it, you will get an additional 15% off of your entire order. So head on over to www.makoletonline.com. That's www.makoletonline.com and head there today. All right, let me take a real quick sip of coffee. Um, and we will move into our next section, Chamesh 
Bakamesh, our Upan section. And I have some fun words, plus a correction from last week. Give me one moment. Mm. All right. So that is, hey, Peter, what's up? That is the coffee that we both love. Um, Peter works in New York City with my wife, and uh, I give him a shout out every single time. And I don't, I don't know if you guys know about him. So, all right. So we're going into our chamesh bakamesh now. Before we go into this, I have to do a correction. And that correction is le, uh, to the word win. I mispronounced it. I put, if you watch the video version, I put text saying this word is mispronounced. But I would be remiss um, in our journey of Hebrew if I didn't correct myself. I have to get like way up and look at this. Uh, all right, so when is le not sayak? It was with an a nun, which is an n sound, and a tsadi, which is a t sound. So again, I apologize for that. It's le not sayak. So for those of you who watched before, there you go. I apologize. For those of you who didn't, you're probably going, "What the heck are you talking about?" Which is okay. Go watch the old episode, see my mistake, and be thankful for my correction. Now, in this section of Chamesh Bachamesh, since we are talking about music, I have some words that deal with music. Now, some of these are going to be like, oh, are you kidding? That's not a Hebrew word. But it is because the adoption of some words in Hebrew have come from other languages, some from Yiddish, uh, some from Yiddish, some from uh, Arabic. We've picked up some Arabic words that are fun. We've picked up uh, some English words. Or actually what's funny is some of these words are actually the same words in Spanish or German or any of the other Western languages too, especially this one. So our first one is oh come on you guys can totally get this our first one is musica now what is musica come on if you don't get this i'm i'm hurt okay musica is music all right so that one that one's a gimme all right um our next one is are you ready for this Musica e. I hope I'm saying that right. Musica e. Musica e. Musica e. That's what the little uh, what that's what the vowels speak. I I'm gonna have to go deeper into that. Musica e. And musica e is musician. All right. So uh, those two those two are kind of gimmies. Um. But, hey, it, it wouldn't be fun if it wasn't a little bit easy, right? And it wouldn't be fun if it wasn't a little bit hard. And the next one, some of you may know this word already and be like, oh, wow, I know that word. The next one is shir. Shir is song, okay? So that one's not the same. So musica, musicai, and shir which is song. Now, I'm going to mess you guys up a little bit. Zamar. Now, what is Zamar? If you're watching the video version, I forgot. It comes up as soon as I say it. But if you're listening, Zamar is singer. So, you would think that it would be like Shiri'i or something like that. Because shir is song, but zamar is singer. Let me double check that actually, because I just want to make sure I got the pronunciation right. Because I have been, yes, zamar. Now the next one is important. And you'll, I'm, I'm actually going to wrap around to this one later in the episode. The next one, and again, I want to get this one just right. Yes. 
The next one is kol. Kol. Now, a lot of you, some of you who speak Hebrew, are going kol. Kol doesn't mean voice. But yes, it does. It's um, not with the kaf, which looks like a backward C, but with the... Um, with the kuf, kuf, I think it's kuf, uh, <laughs> getting a little too deep here. Sorry, guys. So, uh, kol is voice. Now, the voice, I don't know if you guys know this, is also in Israel. Um, it's a show. It's not called kol. It's called the voice, Israel. Uh, which is kind of hilarious, but those are our words. Um, musica, musicai, shir. Let me double check. What's the, what's the next one? The next one is zamar, which is zamar, singer, kol, the voice, voice. Hakol would be the voice. Um, so that was uh, kind of a mess. I'm sorry about that. But it, if you're watching the video version, it's okay because all the words are up there. If you're listening, I apologize. Um, all right. Let me take... <laughs> and that's our Kamesh Bachamesh. So give me a moment. Let me grab my pile of notes. I have a ton of notes. I've been doing a lot of research. Um, a lot of these shows are off the cuff but even though they're not scripted they are n annotated i don't know it's, is that what you would say um there are notes so that i get my information correct and so that i give you the the correct the the straight dope so to speak um give me a moment hold on uh, uh, uh. all right so music in israel and we are going to be talking about music in the state of Israel, not music going all the way back to, uh, like, ancient Israel. Dun, dun, dun. But, um, yeah, there are so many songs ticking around in my head. Um, there's, uh, there are just songs just flowing, flowing, flowing. It's actually, it is, and I'm going to give you guys, this will tie into my uh, my little Ulpan segment, but for those of you who want to get a better understanding of Hebrew and who also want to get very succinct pronunciation, I suggest you go on iTunes. Well, first go to YouTube and look up a bunch of stuff. Then go to iTunes and buy all the songs. Um, that's exactly what I did. What I started with uh, this one song called Ma Mahapecha Shel Simcha, um, which is by this artist called Lior Narkis and Omer Adam, two very huge, popular, popular singers in Israel. Um, and we're going to go over them in the latter half. What I'm The way I'm going to break it down, I think, is I'm going to talk to you guys about a little bit of the history. Um, I am going to go a little pre-state on one section, um, but most of it's all going to be relevant to uh, after 1948. Um, and there are some interesting statements that I've gotten this, that I've, that I've put in my notes that I, I am going to read. I don't necessarily like to read from paper to you guys. I like to be able to give you from me straight, but some of these are so important and cover so much ground. They're actually good talking points and good springboards to start the conversation. So the first one is, um, it's basically describing that the music of Israel is a combination of Jewish and non-Jewish traditions that have come together over the course of a century to create a distinctive musical culture. And what's funny about that is one of the one of the individuals that we're going to be interviewing is a gentleman named Tomer Yosef, um, who is the lead singer for a group called Balkan Beatbox 
who has music like nothing you've ever seen before. It is so fun. They blend everything from hip hop, Balkan music, um, Mizraki music, guitars, percussion, everything. Pop music. It's it's funny. Um, I, there's this one song I trusted you, which is uh, it, it is the true essence of Israeli music because it combines this dun 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 poppy hip hoppy kind of thing with this dun 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 dun, dun guitar thing, and it's really just absolutely amazing. I'm gonna put that uh, as well as a number of other videos for a number of different artists. There's probably going to be about maybe 10, 15 videos in the, in the YouTube, uh, in the description section of the YouTube version of this episode. Um, now Jewish immigrants from Europe, also the middle East and elsewhere brought with them, um, all of their musical traditions. And what they did was they melted, molded them together and they created what is the Israeli sound. You'll notice that in the U.S. and in Europe, um, Eastern Europeans at the turn of the 20th century, prior to and after, immediately after, brought with them klezmer music. They brought with them a lot of Russian folk songs, but ironically, in Hebrew, um... And that was all part of the mus is it the masculine movement? Um, the movement, the Jewish enlightenment, enlightenment, when Hebrew started to become used in the in the discourse. And one of the things that they did, and this is really kind of cool, and I saw something interesting that I'm going to throw in here with it. That um, Hebrew. As soon as, as soon as they started using it in common discourse at that time, that turn of the century time that I was telling you about, they started writing poetry in Hebrew. They started writing songs in Hebrew or taking tunes and putting Hebrew lyrics to them. So this is really kind of neat. Uh, that also ties in, give me one moment. That also ties in with something interesting. So my Hebrew teacher was telling me about, so a lot of Israelis go to Greece and uh, there are, they'll go to Greece and they'll hear a song on the radio in Greek. Uh, yeah, right. Um, and they'll say, I know that song. That's so weird. I know that song, but I don't know these words. So it's still going on today. So what's happening is Israeli artists are taking tunes, really fun, catchy tunes. And what is the best form of appreciation using that? Some would call it plagiarism. All right, I get it. Some would call it stealing. Um, Metallica would definitely call it stealing. Uh, um, for those of you who get that joke, more power to you. Um, but... To some would call it the greatest expression of appreciation, the greatest compliment you could do. And they, uh, the, so there are pop songs in Israel that when people go abroad and hear, wait, I know that song. It's still going on today. This is something that is a hundred, over a hundred year old exercise. So that's really, I, it's really badass. I'm sorry. I'm going to use that. Um, so this is interesting. A lot of the Zionist immigrants who arrived before 1935 came from Russia. So when we say Russia, we have to, um, we have to understand we're talking about the Russian kingdom or, uh, yeah, we're basically uh, at the times of these great aliyahs, these were the Russian kingdom and this included Poland, Ukraine, um, Lithuania, all of those territories that were governed. Basically, it was the uh, what was called the Pale of Settlement, and that was the region that the Jews were housed in, and they were all those Eastern Bloc countries. So with it, they brought um, 
folk tunes, and that's what I'm talking about. They brought these folk tunes and musical styles that were popular in Russia. And uh, so, yeah, wow. Contrafacta. Everyone learns a brand new word. Contrafacta. So basically what contrafacta is, is um, it is the original song with lyrics in another language adopted or adapted which is i uh, again I, and i just went over all that i think that's pretty awesome um it was also this is important so i spoke about klezmer music and that was brought to the country um in the early 20th century before the state and i told you guys i was going to touch on a little and that's because there were these major aliyahs um as a result of laws in specific areas that drove migration out of those countries of Jews into uh into Israel um and many Hasidic and klezmer melodies found their way into the canon of Israeli folk music um and this is again another example of it with lyrics translated from the Yiddish into Hebrew so that's fascinating to me because if you know anything about Jewish history and you know anything about Zionist history, so you have these secular Jews, okay, these secular socialist Bundist Jews who are saying, we're not religious. We are culturally Jewish, but we are living the dream of the Maccabees, you know what I mean? To be free, to have our own state, to have our own lands. And, but what do they bring with them? Hasidic folk songs. That's hilarious. That's so great. Um, small note, by the way, uh, on those kibbutzim and moshavim, kibbutzes and moshavs, um, which you're probably not supposed to say, but whatever. Uh, g- grammatically, I mean, not like against the rules. I mean, just grammatically, you're probably. So the kibbutzim and moshavim, which were the farms and the collectives uh, of these socialist Bundes groups, Zionist groups, um, they celebrated Shabbat. So what's going on? It's kind of hilarious. I think it's neat. I think it's really great. Um, It all drives into this article that I read, and I'm not going on a segue. I just think it's interesting. It ties in about there was this article I read about secular Jews who refrain from eating pork, and they can't really explain why. Like, there's a large majority of them, according to the article. So I just thought that was funny. So it's also interesting because you have... um, you have all of these, you have all of these people coming. I'm turning my ringtone down. I'm sorry. I forgot. I did not do that. Um, you have all of these secular, secular, we are pragmatic. We know the world. Oh yeah. We got to do Shabbat. Oh yeah. We're not going to eat pork. I just think it's fascinating. It's wonderful. It's so fun because it's what keeps everything going it's what keeps everything running smoothly um so i have uh, a little bit more history and then we'll go into our second round of shout outs but mm-mm. sorry one moment a little more coffee so on top of that you had another group you had um and this is interesting this is actually kind of fascinating you have The music of the Yemenite Jews. So the Yemenite Jews, and I don't know much about them other than the small portion that I read, but apparently they were a very secluded society within Yemen. They were, they did a lot to keep themselves away from the herd, so to speak. And I want to read this because this was absolutely fascinating. I want to make sure I get it right. So, the music of Yemenite Jews was particularly influential in the development of Israeli music because it was seen by early Zionists 
as a link to their biblical roots. Again, what's going on here? The music of the ancient Hebrews wrote the, I didn't even know this was a job, musicologist A.Z. Idelson is preserved in memory and practice in various Jewish centers. Yemen and South Arabia is a community that live practically in seclusion for 1,300 years. So the thought is um, that because they lived in seclusion that, uh, and because the concept of the Torah being the same and religious practice being the same over time, since we have a record and we maintained a model of behavior, that therefore the music would be similar because it maintained a model of behavior over time. Um, There was a Yemenite Jewish community in Palestine before 1900, and the European settlers who came in the 1920s were enamored of the Yemenite style. Many of the early Zionist folk songs were westernized versions of Yemenite songs. Now, I wanted to talk about this because this is something that's going to come up in the second half when we talk about Mizrahi music. Um, One of my absolute all-time super-duper favorites and one of the favorites of a large group. We could even probably get away with saying majority of of people in Israel of all ages um, and all backgrounds. Now... um, before I get into that, um, actually, before I get into the next section, I am going to do my shout out. So let's take a quick break. Let's take a uh, and do this real quick. All right. So our first one is from iConnect, engagement with Israel that earns you rewards. iConnect is a website dedicated to teaching you more about Israel. It's also a social gaming platform where you can play, earn points, and receive cool prizes all for free. While you're there, you will connect with Israel by engaging with all of iConnect's numerous articles, games, quizzes, polls, and more. Now, why should you play? Because iConnect's unique platform introduces you to Israel in a fun, exciting, and most importantly, rewarding way, all while working towards giving you a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience. So head on over to www.iconnect.co.il. That's www.iconnect.co.il and start playing now. (sighs) Our next one is from Israel Phones. They are the leading provider of communication devices for for people traveling to Israel, and they offer SIM cards, mobile phone rentals, and Wi-Fi devices, which are mobile Wi-Fi hotspots, and serve the connectivity needs of tour groups, synagogues, schools, community missions, study programs, and individuals visiting their family and friends supplying you with all of the mobile phone equipment that you'll need on your next trip to Israel. Now, you can get 30 gigabytes for only $29, 50 gigabytes for only $39. And these new packages are better than the old packages. You now get much more bang for your buck um, with unlimited calls and texts in Israel and international calling to the USA included. These plans are valid for 30 days, 10% discount, four stays over 90 days. With their new iConnect Israel Rewards program, you can get a $15 credit to cover the cost of the SIM card for just signing up. You can join iConnect Israel right now and start earning points towards great rewards. Also, if you type in the code 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two cities in Israel, and if you spend $30 or more on your on their site, they will give you a free SIM card, which is a $15 value. So either way you want to go, please head on over to israelphones.com. Um, all right, so back to music. Let me take another sip of coffee. I am, I'm, I'm a real coffee guy. I, my throat's a little sore today. I apologize. 
You guys are great for being patient. So we've spoken about, um, we've spoken about music coming to Israel. So now we have people in Israel and I finished up with telling you that all of these folk songs were developed. Now, folk songs are good. They're wonderful. They're great. They, uh, add to cohesion. They add to, um, enhancing a sense of community, especially in places where, you know, it's dark at night. You're out on a farm. It's quiet. There, there wasn't TV back then. (laughs) There was nothing to do in the evening. So they would sit around the fire, uh, eat meals and they would sing and they would, uh, do all that. But there were also urban centers. One of them was Tel Aviv which was developed out of a moshav, uh, out of a farm, uh, outside of Yafo, north of Yafo. And in these cities, you had people who may not have been, just like we have here in the United States, um, you have people who, I don't want to live in the country, I'm not a country person. And their tastes are going to be a little bit different. And their backgrounds are going to be a little bit different, perhaps. Well, one of the things that they did was in 1936, the Palestine Orchestra was founded. And it was founded by a violinist. His name was Bronislav Huberman. And he had the Zionist dream. But he wasn't a farmer. He wasn't a Moshavnik, a guy who was going to go and live on a, or a kibbutznik, a guy who was going to go and live on the kibbutz. He was going to bring his talents and lend them to what he hoped would become the new state. And on December 26th, in 1936, after he had gotten all of this together, the Palestine Orchestra had their inaugural concert, which is pretty awesome. I learned about them actually in college. A wonderful professor I had, uh, Professor Shani Greenstein, who is also the illustrious Hebrew professor for the City College of New York Jewish Studies program. She did a life in Israel type of class, and uh, it was really Wonderful. Actually, some of the information that is in this episode is from that class, or at least, uh, yeah, definitely, it's from that class. Now, its general manager, the Palestine Orchestra, between 1938 and 1945 was Leo Kestenberg, who, like many of the orchestra members, was a German Jew forced out by the rise of Nazism and the persecution of Jews. Now, this wasn't just um, wasn't just in Germany. This was all over Europe, as it was. I mean, anti-Jewish sentiment was rife in a lot of places. It was in Austria. Um, it was in Italy. It was in the uh, in Hungary. All over the place. So you had all these people coming, and some of them were artists, musicians, and those that had the capability and the capacity to be in an orchestra were were recruited in. Now, during the Second World War, the orchestra performed, are you ready for this? This is so cool, 140 times before Allied soldiers, including a 1942 performance First soldiers of the Jewish Brigade at El Alamein. Now, the Jewish Brigade, that's actually kind of interesting because the Jewish Brigade were Jewish um, individuals who fought for the British Army in their own special unit. And that's just, that's cool. So, and if I'm not mistaken... They also fought against the Vichy in Lebanon 
Um, and I don't know how Moshe Dayan was involved in that, but I think he might have been involved with them. Now, at the end of the war, it performed in recently liberated Belgium. And in 1948, after the creation of the State of Israel, the orchestra was renamed as the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, and it's still operates and performs to this day how cool is that that's so awesome that's so neat um and it it is it plays all over the world um and i thought that that would be a fascinating little nugget to bring you about music in israel but i mentioned hmm, i mentioned that um during World War II that they played in front of the Jewish Brigade. Now, this is interesting because it ties into the next part. So there is a unit of musicians in the IDF. Uh, It's pretty fascinating, the history of it. Now, we have, so in the United States, we had what's called the, uh, we still do, we have the USO, and the USO gives performances, Um, but in in the Army, Navy, Marines, and the Air Force, they all have bands. Now, the bands are more presentational, so if there's an event they will perform. They don't perform for the troops. They perform on behalf of the military in the United States. Um, Israel has that as well, but they also have a sort of like uh, morale. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this little section to you. The influence of the military on Israeli music, however, goes far beyond its being a source of inspiration for songs. The military establishment has been an active an active promoter of music through its core of military performance groups and through its army run radio station Gale Sahal. So since the nineteen fifties, the IDF has performance groups and they're called Lekot. So they're army ensembles. Now, this is actually kind of cool. This is the neat part. So a lot of Israel's stars, performers, singers, um, they're they're big stars. And I, I, darn it, I don't know if I have the name of them. Yes, I do have a couple of them. Um... Let's see. I have, let me read this. So performing original materials, meticulously prepared and performed, these groups became leaders in the Israeli music and entertainment field. Many of Israel's most popular songs were written by them, like Dina Barzilai, words by Chaim Hefer, music by Sasha Argov, Alleluia by Yair Rosenblum, uh, Yeshnan Banot, words by Yorem Tahar Lev, again, music by Yair Rosenblum, um, Dubi Zeltzer, considered one of the founding fathers of Israeli pop musics, uh, is a founder of Israeli, uh, one of the founding fathers of Israeli pop music. He wrote many of the songs for. Nahal Brigade um, for their entertainment troupe. So a lot of these people, and I'm, oh, here we go. Among the artists who began their careers are Arik Einstein, Chava Elberstein, the members of Chavaret, Yehoram Gaon, Nahama Hendel, Yisrael Borakov, Yardena Arazi, Shlomo Artsy, Eti Arkri and David Deor. Um, 
And also Naomi Shammer, who is super huge. Johanan Zarai, Yoni Rector, um, Nuret Hirsch, and of course, Geir Rosenblum. Now, um, Naomi Shermer, she wrote um, Jerusalem of Gold, uh, which is wow. And all of these people started, and I know I feel like I, it may have sounded like I went on a tangent there, but what you have to understand is that the army is so much a part of life in Israel that having it be a springboard to music is, it works for me. It's rational for me. It makes sense. Um, it's like a lot of people, like I had a friend when I was in the Navy in the United States, I have a friend who was a boxer. He was basically a professional boxer. He was in the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps allowed him to box professionally. And then he continued after he got out. Now the same kind of thing occurs in Israel uh, depending on what your, what your talent is and what track it will take you on. So I just think it's neat that if you have a, uh, if you have a musical talent, you can, you can choose to do this. You can choose to try out, um, whether you make it or not. Hey, it's up to you, uh, talent wise, but that's so cool. That's so neat. Um, and that, it's not seen as something that would stymie your career. Now, I don't know how that is now, but up until um, very recently, that was the case. Uh, and there are cases where you have people who are famous young go into the army and then they come out and they continue their career. I just, I think that's fascinating. Um, I think it's really, really cool. Um, all right, now we're going to talk about something that I love in music. And I would be, again, remiss if I left this out. Let me take a quick sip of coffee. Hold on. And that is Mizraki music. Uh, um, Doresh, gets a Mizraki. Um, Doresh, gets a Mizraki. Um, so there's this song called Mah Ha Pecha Shel Simcha, and it is huge and it is heard everywhere. And it was big on the radio. I would say, what's that about three years ago, maybe? And, uh, it was enormous. It was everywhere. I know the words to it. You'll catch me singing it. I actually, it's my ringtone, whatever. I love this song. Um, and it's by Lior Narkis and Omer Adam. And they are two huge Mizraki singers. Um, Lior Narkis has a ton of great songs. He actually has some, uh, a great live concert. Uh, now Mizraki music was, and it's funny because if you think about this, this is such a parallel. So think about hip hop. Back in the day, and hip hop was seen as interesting, but not musical. Um, it was of that group. Okay. That's how society, we're looking in larger societal paradigms. So it's of that group. So we want to keep it there. There was, um, oh, who is it? Uh, what's her face? Um, Vice President, uh, Tipper Gore with the, the, the lyrics thing, the ban on lyrics, because lyrics are bad, but it was an expression of that group. And, but society wanted to keep it over there. The same goes for Mizrahi music. So Mizrahi music is the music of the East, and it's big in the Sephardic and Mizrahi community. And the Sephardic and Mizrahi community are Jews from Morocco, um, from Algeria, from Egypt, from 
uh, and then you have the Mizraki, which would uh, um, be Jew. Oh, yeah, I got that mixed up. Mizraki, I don't know. Would Mizraki be Jews of Egypt or would they be Sephardi? I don't know. Um, but you have the the Persian Jews. You have the Mountain Jews. Um, you have the Iraqi Jews. You have Jews from all over the Middle East and the Balkans. And you have all these flavors, and they brought them all together. And they brought them all, all together. Now, there is a Mizraki group called the Revivo Project. They're actually, thank you so much. They're the music for my show. Um, you, They are a perfect prime example of that core Mizraki sound that Mizraki feel that you know the the violins the fast guitars it's just I mean it is they are Mizraki music but Mizraki music has seeped into pop culture now now originally and this is the fascinating part so Mizraki and this is why I relate it to hip-hop Mizraki music wasn't played on the radio. They wouldn't play it on the radio in Israel. Oh, that garbage music. We're not playing that. So what people would do is they would go to the Makola, the, the, yeah, they'd go to the corner store, the bodega, like in hip hop, and they would buy cassette tapes. And Mizraki artists would record onto cassette tapes and then reproduce them and sell them in the uh, in the uh, in the corner stores. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm sorry, I'm dating myself, but cassette tapes, if you had one of those in your car, you were playing it. Boom. It was awesome. It's so cool. It is the same exact vibe. Now... Mizraki music has become such an ingrained, interwoven part of Israeli music that it is a, it's, it's an aspect of the culture now. It's not an aspect of Mizraki and Sephardi culture. It's an aspect of Israeli culture, all of it. And I think that's so fabulous. Now, I have a bunch of artists that I'm going to tell you about. And these are some of the people that I'm going to, that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to include videos. One of them is, um, and before I go any further, so I'm going to talk about a lot of different musicians over the next maybe, what is it, like five minutes? But I'm going to give you a song. By Sapir Saban. She was on The Voice. And the Israel's version of The Voice. And she came out and I had my wife. I I brought my wife into my office and I said, you got to hear this woman. And my wife doesn't necessarily like hearing things in other languages. It's not because she's got a problem. It's just she she doesn't understand. So she's like. I don't want to hear it if I can't understand it. Um, she's kind of old school like that. Whatever. No big deal. I put this on. She was like, her voice is like a musical instrument. <clears throat> then she gets on with, I think, Shlomi Shabbat, who is another. Is that his name? Yeah. Shlomi Shabbat, who is another amazing Mizraki singer. Um, they sing this song. And I'm, I just slaughtered it. Um, I don't even know if I pronounce it right. Uh, but they sing this duet and I'm going to put that in there. You're going to lose your noodle. Um, but you have everything you have just, you have all these different kinds. You have Sarita Dad who sings Mizraki music, but she also sings pop music. You have Leona Narkis, who I told you about, who is incredibly popular. Um, You have Omer Adam, who sings 
he sings uh, Mahapeka Shel Simcha, which is that popular song I told you about. But then he also sings this Misrak this Mizraki song that is 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 become identified with Israel, and it's called Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, ya habibi, Tel Aviv. And I'm going to put that one in there too. But it's so fun. All this stuff is so fun. Um, what else? We have, uh, oi, Pierre Tassi, who is, his voice is like a dream. And uh, he sings this song called Derek Shalom, which was another huge hit. So I'm giving you all this stuff, and the reason I'm telling you about all these songs and all of these artists is because I'm going to include all this. And if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or any of the other um, portals, I really want you to go over to the YouTube video and look in the description and open these videos that I'm going to put. There's another guy, Avior Malasa, and he... His voice, holy cow. His voice is like honey. And he sings hip-hop, like reggae, or, or reggaeton, um, and, and, which, uh, again, is actually really huge in Israel. Reggaeton, which is the, uh, the it's basically Hispanic reggae. And uh, that's had a huge influence on a lot of music. Um, you have this group called Hatik Vashesh, which is a reggae group and it's a brother and a sister in their group. Um, what else do we have? We have Subliminal, Subliminal, who is awesome. Um, he's got like intense eyes too. It kind of messes me up. Um, uh, don't, don't, uh, you know what I mean? He's always like, oh, I'm looking at you serious, but he is so much fun and he has, he's a hip hop artist. He is a freaking hip hop artist. Israel has hip hop artists. On that note, he's also a producer and has one of my favorite musicians, Itai Levy, who, oh my gosh, if you want to get that special someone, put on his song, Perak Bash Mama. Oh my gosh, it is so awesome. And then what else? Then there's the Ultras who sing, uh, oh, a ton of songs. And they have a new one out, which is fun. Um, I know I'm missing people. Um, Neta, Neta, who was at Eurovision and won Eurovision, not last year, but the year before. Um, and I am going to put some of her performances as she went through Eurovision because she actually does this whole beatbox with the delay machine thing that is out of control and her song, I'm Not Your Toy. Oh, it's awesome. Um, all right, so you guys got a lot of homework. <laughs> um, this was a fun episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, all right, thank you so much for joining us for the 12 Cities in Israel podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our feed and become a part of the 12 cities in Israel community. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. And we'll be bringing you a brand new podcast every week, so keep your eyes out for that. Also, 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 to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon page and become a regular donor. You can find that page on www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in israel <laughs> i just i slaughtered that in the beginning of it so it's www.patreon.com forward slash one two cities in israel um also 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 please visit our youtube channel where you can see a video version of this podcast plus other videos that we have prepared produced including our full-length travel episode of my favorite place the city of Beersheba in southern israel while you're there, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also check us out on our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com, the number one, two cities in Israel, on our Facebook page, 
on Instagram where every day I try to put up a brand new picture from our travels to Israel and on Twitter where I'm spotty, but I'm still getting it. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it. Todo va. Yalla bye.